Hello and welcome back to Ready Steady DIY. If it's your first time here, thanks so much for joining us. Well, as you know, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, the kind of stuff that I like to own includes a lot of things from the 70s and 80s, stuff most people would consider old, but I was born in the 70s, so I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Anyway, I think a lot of this stuff is great. I own older stereo equipment, turntables, video games. I own records. But one of the great unsung tragedies of this era is that a lot of people smoked. So when you come across a real treasure from the 70s or the 80s, there's a very good chance it was damaged by tobacco smoke. I recently acquired some great old video games and more importantly their manuals that have been through just this. So if you want to see how I went about trying to get the smoke smell out of the manuals for these video games, stay tuned to the end. But for now, let's get going. <laughs> Tobacco smoke damage is no small thing. It's actually really, really difficult to manage the damage caused by tobacco smoke. One of the reasons for this is because different kinds of tobacco produce different kinds of smoke. Flu-cured tobacco is gonna have a more acidic kind of smoke. Air-cured tobacco is gonna produce a more basic kind of smoke. And then if the style of the smoker involved a lot of puffing, that's gonna change the smoke. But if the cigarette smoldered a lot, that'll be a different kind of smoke yet again. Accordingly, if you're gonna take the smoke smell out of objects and you're gonna do this in kind of a cost-effective manner, cause let's face it, a lot of this old stuff you buy at garage sales or on Kijiji or Craigslist, there are machines out there on the market that can help take the smoke smell out, but they're pretty expensive. And for doing small little jobs, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So if you're like me and you've got some video game manuals you wanna get the smoke smell out of, but you don't wanna spend a whole lot, you're looking for sort of a home remedy, you'll probably do what I did. Let me show you how that all shook out. So I had these video game manuals. They came from a variety of ColecoVision games I just picked up. I love ColecoVision. That's a whole other story. But to me, the video game manual is a really integral part of the game. I love seeing the artwork on the cartridge, but the artwork in the manual is also really important. Somebody took a long time. They sat down, they wrote out for all the people who were gonna buy the game, not only how to play it, but why it was exciting. I really like reading some of the language, looking at the illustrations. I think this is part of the creative process of creating any video game. And if you've been on the channel for any length of time, you know I always say read the manual. <laughs> I think that goes for video games too. So I had these manuals here. They stank of smoke. I rescued these games, a ColecoVision, uh, a Coleco Adam computer, a whole bunch of stuff from the house of someone who was moving. But holy smokes, did it ever stink? The smell was incredible. I kept it all in my van, then my van stank. You pull it out and walk through the house, the house stinks. It just, the cigarette smell just sticks to the stuff. The smell of the tobacco smoke just does not leave these things. I needed a little bit of help. First, I tried laying them out in the sun and letting the wind take care of it. Didn't work. So then I got on the internet. I did a little bit of research. I discovered that there are compounds called amphoteric compounds and that these compounds react both with acidic and alkaline molecules. So basically, when they come into contact with smoke smell, whether that smoke smell came from acidic tobacco smoke or base tobacco smoke, it didn't really matter. So I went to the dollar store, I got one of these little magazine holders. They seemed like a pretty good size to create a little vat. Inside the vat, I thought I would lay in some baking soda because that was the cheapest and the easiest product I could find. I already had it and I knew it was amphoteric. So I thought, oh, well, maybe it will work. People put baking soda in their fridges to absorb smells. Why not? So I laid some baking soda into the bottom of the magazine rack. And then because I didn't want to put the manuals right in the baking soda, I stuck in some foam paint rollers that just happened to be the exact right width. They sort of pinched their way into the bottom. And that way the manuals could stay about an inch above the baking soda. I figured if I can keep them out of the baking soda, but the baking soda could still do its job, why not just try to keep them separate, just in case. So from there, it's pretty easy. I wrapped the top in saran wrap, put an elastic on it and let it sit for a couple of days. I went back, I checked, it was a little better. <laughs> But the tobacco smell was still there. That smoldery, never going away, super stubborn smell was buried deep in these manuals. It's hard, I think, for the baking soda to react with the inner pages because they're closed, right? There's not a lot of air circulation in there. And I wasn't sure if I left it in longer, if it would work better or not. But I thought, you know, there's one other amphoteric substance I could use. Activated carbon, otherwise known as activated charcoal otherwise known as the junk that's in your Brita filter. <laughs> Activated carbon can be purchased somewhat expensively if you get it really ground up fine because they use it in the beauty industry. But if you go to a big box store and look where they keep the aquariums, you can get activated carbon 
ground up pretty well that'll do the same job for very little money. I think the uh, aquarium world uses it to purify water, but whatever they use it for, I was gonna use it to purify my video game manuals, or at least I was gonna try. So out came the baking soda, cleaned out the magazine holder, dumped in some activated carbon, replaced the rollers. This time it's more critical because the activated charcoal really will leave a stain on the manuals if it gets up on the sides of the inside of the magazine holder. And I really didn't want that. So I was really careful. And then I carefully put the manuals in, covered it with saran wrap, added an elastic band and left it for a couple of days. Much better. <laughs> Was it perfect after 48 hours? Absolutely not. But was it passable? Totally. It was amazing how different it was. And yes, these manuals went through two phases, one with baking soda and then another with activated carbon. But I did it a second time with just activated carbon on some other manuals and it still worked. I think activated carbon is the way to go. So if you've got a better way, a different way, I wanna hear about it. Please put that in the comments section below. And obviously, now that I've got these things smelling reasonably good, now I gotta flatten them. <laughs> but that's next week's video. So be sure to come back and check it out next Saturday. So like I say every week, I hope that helped you out. If it did, please feel free to like or subscribe. The channel is still just getting started. Any likes or subscriptions really help. And if you know a better way to clean tobacco smoke out of paper, let me know. I wanna hear about that in the comments section. So until next week, take care, stay safe, have fun with your DIY projects, and I'll see you next Saturday.